Joining me today is Prerika Argowal, and she is the CEO of Inspiration Careers. And we're going to have a good conversation. This is a really good one. We're going to talk about creating burnout resistant boundaries at your nine to five. I told you it was going to be a good one. But before we get into it, I have to give Prerika a moment to shine. Tell us more about yourself, anything you'd like us to know. And thank you so much for being here with me today. Take it away. Yes, CJ, thank you so much. I am so thrilled to be here on your podcast and talk to all of you listeners who might be side hustling. Maybe you're with your nine to five, you're thinking about making that jump Mm -hmm. because I was in your shoes and I made that jump in March Mm. of last year. So a little bit about me is I've spent 20 years in the corporate world. I had technology and strategy roles. And this is something that I feel is just my calling. I have mentored and coached so many women and people of color, and that's really my mission. And so I decided to leave my nine to five and do this full time. But of course, as easy as it sounds, I'm going to be sharing with you that the transition wasn't that easy. And what Mm. really helped me was being able to manage my boundaries, be really firm about that, and then also coach on that as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you really found your calling. So, of course, I have to ask you, you said it wasn't easy. The transition wasn't easy. It's not. It never is. I don't know why anybody's trying to make it sound like going from employee to entrepreneur is an easy journey. But I love to ask the question, what was your experience like? You did it just did it last year. Congrats, yes. by the way, on making the transition. What was what has your journey been like so far? Yeah. So I started laying the groundwork for Inspiration Careers, which is my company back in 2019. Right. And so I was holding on to my day job, which was an executive role. One, because I wasn't really quite sure if this would take off. And I wanted that financial Mm. security. Right. I think sometimes Mm. we really have to be practical. A lot of coaches, including myself, talk about mindset. And that's Mm -hmm. so important, but you also have to be practical. And that's where like those boundaries come in of what am I willing to accept? What am I not willing to accept? And what really made it tough for me, CJ, is I did have some success when I decided to go all in, but entrepreneurship is so different than your full time because you're not getting that paycheck every two weeks Mm -hmm. and it's not the same amount and it's unexpected, right? And a lot of, you know, my success Sometimes I feel like, okay, if I'm not signing clients or if I don't get the contract, right, that is a reflection on me. And so that's really where some of that burnout comes in, which I'm going to be talking about is I start to feel that stress and that peace coming in and I have to enforce boundaries and really make sure that I'm getting back to who I am. The second thing is, I think there's a lot of people who, you know, you can call it luck. Maybe they're in the right time, right place. They have a specific niche. There are those people who are overnight successes, Mm. but being an entrepreneur is the long game. This isn't usually something where you put in a couple of months and then you're replacing your full-time salary, even though I hear those stories amplified so much, right? It takes time. It takes time for people to get to know you, to understand your new identity. And a lot of times the people that are closest to you have the most difficult time imagining you as this new person, as this business leader or doing this new thing. And they keep wanting to kind of put you in your old, you know, slot of who you used to be, what type of work you were doing. And so it's still happening to me today is that I was just chatting with a really good friend of mine who was thinking about me for a role of something that I had done 15 years ago. I haven't Mm -hmm. done that thing in 15 years and was like, oh, you'd be great for this. And it's change management. I haven't done change management in 15 years, but he was still thinking of me in that role. And so that's why I say that it can be difficult because we think that the people around us will support us the most, but often those are the people that it's most difficult to convince. Yeah. And that's where it's it's handy to have a coach to provide that support. I hear all the time too is that lack of support, fear of judgment are are key pieces in like women feeling very stuck or tied to the nine to five. If they feel like the people around them aren't going to be on board with their decision, then how are they going to be able to do this successfully? And that's where the the boundaries need to start coming in too. So you in you making your transition, um, you 
and knowing it's it's the long game. You mentioned entrepreneurship is a long game, and yes, we've had some overnight successes. Kudos to them who've been able to make the six <laughs> figures in sixty days or whatever it was. I love that for them, um, but realistically, that's not everybody. That's not the typical story. I love that you talk about boundaries because I feel like that is, it can be such a sensitive topic depending on the relationship too. So you mentioned those closest to you. They're also the boundaries you have to establish when you are at your nine to five, the boundaries you have to establish once you start getting clients, the boundaries you have to establish with yourself. There's so many different types of boundaries. So Talk to me a little bit more about like how, what is a, one of the first things that you really have to um, consider when you are trying to establish the right kinds of boundaries? Yes. So, you know, first of all, what I want to say is a lot of times when people think about burnout, they are thinking about burnout that has progressed so much that you're not able to sleep, you're tired, emotionally exhausted, you're disconnected. And mm -hmm. I would say if that is happening to you and that's the stage that you're in, right, you're definitely in the burnout stage. And that's why we want to start early on. And so even if you're that type of person who is driven, you're type A, mm -hmm. this is about preventative, right? This is about being really clear from the start about what do you want your life to look like? Right. And so I like to start with clarity, especially let's say if you are in a corporate job, a nine to five, and you're thinking about moving into an entrepreneurship or you are an entrepreneur or business owner already. Let's start with a couple of things. Right. One is time. OK, mm. being an entrepreneur, you talked about like the challenges before. It, it's almost like a limitless thing. You could spend all the time, all the energy doing it. But in the end, that's not going to be helpful and it's going to lead to burnout, right? So you need mm -hmm. to be really clear that if you are working these hours, what is the amount of time that you have that is feasible for you to spend on your entrepreneurial journey, right? Is it two hours a day every night? Is it going to be something that you're doing on the weekend? And first of all, let's start there, that you are going to set that up of like time limits. Mm -hmm. The next thing that I would say in the preventative stage is you need, again, a lot of energy to be handling both things at the same time or even to be really successful in your nine to five. Right. And so I really want you to check in those of you who are listening. Right. Are you getting enough sleep and rest? Are you literally drinking water? Are you giving your yourself a chance to move during the day? And are you taking breaks are you eating, right? Or are you the kind of person who it's like you're doing your nine to five and then you're jumping into your entrepreneurial journey. You're not having lunch, you're not sleeping and you're driving yourself into the ground, which is what that temptation is. And you're thinking, okay, if I do that, if I make that sacrifice, I'm gonna become successful faster, mm. right? And I think that is a lot of what people think is like, if I do that, if I sacrifice my myself, and I don't have strict boundaries, it's going to work out. And then I can take the rest and then right. I can, you know, take the breaks. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's true. You're right. We should be establishing those boundaries from the beginning. We should be. And one of the, the boundaries, and you've mentioned it, and I like to mention to my clients, when we are talking about boundaries, we have to set boundaries for ourselves as well and check in with like, how am I doing? How am I feeling? Like you said, did I drink, am I drinking water? Am I moving? Because you, you have a limit right? And this is where the burnout will come in. And you're, you're anticipating this burnout when you could be preventing it from the beginning. Now, we talked about time. You mentioned time. And that is something that what I hear a lot of is I don't have the time. I don't have the money. So we'll talk about the time. I don't have the time. I have to do this. I have, I don't have the time. And it's, you have to make the time, right? When you can say yes, 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 yes to your nine to five and you're burning the midnight oil doing your nine to five job, for example, and that's already like you have an established boundary where they feel like they can, they expect that from you now. And now you feel like, well, they, I'm, I'm sacrificing my time. So is there an exercise that people can go through and a habit that they can develop when it comes to being in better control of their time to avoid 
the burnout, that the pending burnout from not having, from not having the time. Yes. And, and CJ, you're, you're, you are so right, right? You talked about boundaries with ourselves and with others, right? And with this time and energy audit that I'm going to talk to you about, you can do exactly that. Right. Okay. So the first thing, again, going back to my original point is around clarity. Right. Okay. And so when you have boundaries, you need to have clarity around what is actually important, because here is the thing that happens is you might be prioritizing your nine to five when you're really trying to be an entrepreneur and you want to be that shining star at work and you want to be that shining star in your own business. And I want you to really think about what is more important for you. And so I want you to think about, first of all, a few areas of your life, four categories. I want you to think about career, okay? And that includes nine to five and your business. I want you to think about family. I want you to think about friends mm -hmm. and health, okay? All so right. think about in all of those categories, they're all important, right? But what are the top priorities in each of those areas for you? Right? So yeah. let's start there. Okay. And you're going to write that out. Okay. Yeah. The next thing is, and you may have heard of this already. Okay. It's something called the Eisenhower matrix. Okay. And it is something to help you around your time. And really what you're figuring out is things that are urgent, right? And when I say urgent, what I mean is they have to be done now right? So your child is sick. And so you're not going to wait on that. Your child is sick. It's very urgent and it's very important, right? And so you're going to think about in that family realm, how are you going to manage those tasks, right? Okay. And then what's yeah. longer term? So it's important, right? So your family is important, but there's certain tasks that you have around your family that are very important, but they don't need to be done today or this week. It's something that you can schedule and plan out. For example, a college visit or something like that, right? And so you're, again, you're planning those things out. The next category, and this is really where a lot of us are wasting our time, mm -hmm. is a category around things that are feel urgent, but they're not important, okay? Ooh. Yes. And so what I mean by this is any type of notification. 95% of the people that I talk to, CEOs, leaders, business owners are spending a lot of their time in this category because when you get a ping on your phone, when you get an email, when this thing pops up, yeah, it feels yeah, yeah. urgent, right? Because it's in the moment, yeah. but it's actually, it's not important at all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's something that you can take a look at later. And it is something that you should be managing your day so that you are checking your notifications twice a day, thrice a day. I don't have that magic number, but it shouldn't be like every time there's a ding, you drop what you're doing. You're looking at your phone, you're looking at teams, you're looking at whatever message, because that is going to take you out of your focus and take you out of your efficiency and you're lost there. And yeah. that is what a lot of us start doing is like, we're doing this thing. And then we're like, oh, this opportunity, that shiny new thing. And so it's really managing this category. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I would say is also in this category, think about delegating, right? So if it's, you know, it feels urgent, but it's not important. Think about, are there people on your team at work? Are there people in your in your personal life or family that you can delegate that task to, right? Things that, again, yeah. feel urgent, but they're not important. Yeah. And yeah. so think about outsourcing. And so that is sometimes where, especially as women, we get it wrong. We're scared to outsource. We just don't want, we want to do it all. We want to be, you know, super women. And the thing is, in order to be a superhero in our life, we have to prioritize and we have to let other people help us. Okay. Yes. So that is that area. Yes. And and then the last one are things that are not important and not urgent. So again, it's all the of random things that people get caught up in. So I'll give you some examples of that. Like somebody invites you to something and you really don't have the time for it. 
And, you know, if you look at your priorities in terms of family and friends, that is not something that's not an area that you're working on. If, if you're not trying to build connections or deepen connections, which it's OK in this season mm -hmm. of life. You have to start saying no, because there are trade offs, which is where boundaries come in. Right. And so really think about that quadrant four of is this important to me now? Just because you say no to attending somebody's party, you're not saying that they are not important, but it's just not a priority for you right now. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. this is where we can really dive into that boundaries topic as well. So yeah. I've been talking a lot. I'm going to pause here. <laughs> okay, go on. Because everything you're saying, I'm like, yep, yep, absolutely. Definitely. Yep. Uh, because that's where the boundaries and the burnout, everything, um, they really start to mesh is we don't know how to, like you said, we don't know how to ask for help. We don't know how to say no. And as women, if you're in your nine to five, you become a, an entrepreneur, you become a solopreneur and everything's already on you. They said, I made this decision. I said, I'm going to do this, blah, blah, blah. So I have to do it. It has to be this way. Otherwise it's not going to work. And then at your nine to five, you're like, well, there are certain expectations of me in my role. This was handed to me. So therefore they're expecting me to do it. Right. I remember being in that place in my nine to five, but then I had an entire team. <laughs> like nine people on my team that I knew that I can delegate things to. So with being able to say no and check again, checking in with yourself to say what's working, what's not working, finding what's a priority, understanding what's urgent. Not everything is urgent. I have all of my notifications off on my phone. I don't even know when I get an email until I check my inbox at certain points in the day. And that really does help. You know what else came up when, as you were talking, and this is something I'm really glad I didn't have to deal with when I was at my nine to five is the second phone. <laughs> I have mm, seen, yes. right. I have seen, I have friends who are in um, managerial type positions and they have that second phone on them and we'll be out for dinner and they have the, that phone out, but it's supposed to be after hours. Again, there's a boundary because they feel like they're in this position, they got this promotion, and they have all this responsibility. They can never check out, they can never clock off. What do you say to those women? What do you say to my friends right now that have that second phone? <laughs> yeah. So the second phone, I feel like can be a blessing and a curse, right? So with all right. technology, you have to be able to use it well, right? And so I I took the option of having everything on one phone, but I wouldn't then look at work emails, right? And so what I would say to people is we talked about saying no, but what is the consequence of saying yes? So when you're bringing your work phone along to dinner, to happy hour, to whatever on the weekends, right? You're saying yes to work, to your nine to five. Mm -hmm. What are you saying no to, right? And that goes back to priorities. If you're out with friends, is that a priority? Is connection a priority to you? Or is it more important for you to be focused at work, to be seen as a star at work? And to be mm -hmm. honest with you, neither one is right or wrong, right? So again, this mm -hmm. is not about blaming uh, ourselves yeah. and saying, oh, I'm a bad friend or anything, but it's about being clear. And it's about having that awareness of if I'm bringing my phone with me, I'm saying that my friends, my family, whoever I'm out to dinner with, that is taking a back seat to my career. And are you okay with that, right? And are you yeah. really setting up the boundaries that you wanna be? And so something that I like to tell my clients and you know anyone I'm talking to is I want you to have that CEO mindset. And what I mean by that is you wanna be the CEO of your life. And I want you to think about like when the CEO, when you have a meeting with the CEO, are they multitasking and doing 10 different things or are they very deliberate with their time and what is going on at each time, right? And are they fully present when they're being asked to speak somewhere or give an interview or even if they're out with their family, are they fully present? Are you going to be that fully present person? Or are you somebody who's just going to give away your time easily and willingly? And so I really yeah. want you to take that to heart. Yeah. And CEOs and having that CEO mindset, CEOs have teams. 
CEOs have people, CEOs understand. Of course, they also understand the this, this struggle in the beginning. And they, too, had to set boundaries as well. But they then understand to truly be successful and to find that, quote, unquote, again, I'm going to use the quotes, that work-life balance, everything doesn't have to fall on you. And not everything is a priority. Not everything is urgent. It doesn't need your attention right now because you got that ping on your phone. It's 10 o'clock at night, (laughs) but there you are, you know, you're checking the message or the email, whatever it is that came in. I don't know what the the scenarios um, can vary, but they do understand the importance of, of delegating and establishing boundaries. So I like, I like how you said to, to really kind of think about like what's a priority, what's important, what's the, and also the message. I didn't even think about that. Like what is the type of message you're sending to the person or the people you're with when you are checking that second phone, when you, you can't take your attention away, like how are they interpreting what you're doing? Cause you're so caught up in not having that one boundary, but it's also affecting another another boundary. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. It's true. Okay. I've been loving this conversation. I've been loving this because I can go on and on about boundaries. And we touched a little bit on, like you said, CEO mindset. And I love talking about mindset. I'm a mindset coach. I always talk about mindset. I talk about with my clients. I talk about it on the podcast. Mindset is everything. So if they are too deep now into the not having the boundary and they're feeling they're on the verge of that burnout. They're feeling like if I don't make this change right now, if I don't do something right now, I'm going to crash and I'm going to burn. What, how do they start to, what's a little mindset exercise, if you will, habit do they need to develop so they don't get to that point? They feel it coming. They know it's coming. And if I keep going like this, I keep burning the candle at both ends. This is what's going to happen. How do they avoid that? Yes. So first things first, if you're on the verge of that, I would first and foremost, as easy as it sounds and as difficult as as it can be, is take a deep breath. First of all, just take a deep breath because we just don't pause enough in our day and we're so focused on action, right? We're not thinking about where our thoughts are coming from because a lot of that burnout, right? It also starts in our mind of, yes, we're feeling tired, but we're also feeling emotionally and in our thoughts that it's too much. And so I want you to take a step back and I want you to identify for yourself What is that kind of core thought? Because everybody has one, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to share a story of one of my clients who's a CEO who was struggling with her time as well. And she had all of these beautiful professional goals. She wanted to be a great CEO. And she also wanted to be a really good mom and a good family member, right? And her mindset was that if she didn't prepare dinner every night, then she wasn't a good mom. Okay. And she wasn't a good partner. Mm. And so that thing was sort of underlying everything. And she was spending so much time around family dinner. She was buying the groceries. She was cooking and cleaning up. Okay. So that was, you know, about two hours every single night times seven nights a week. That's 14 hours. Right. And so first we needed to unravel that mindset of like, what's underneath all of this? What's underneath her overwhelm and her feeling like it's too much and all of that. Right. So it's taking a step back and saying, you are a good mother. You are a good partner. And making dinner doesn't is not the indication of how good of a mother you are or how good of a partner you are. Right. So that's why I want you to take that first step and think about what is it for you? Is that thought, I don't have enough time? Is your thought, I am not doing enough in my day job? Is your thought, I have to get promoted and run my business? Is your thought something else? Right. So let's get to the root of like when that overwhelm starts coming in, you're feeling that anxiety, you're feeling all of that rushing in. What's the underlying thought? Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Because right? we, we get, we get caught up in our thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Keep going, keep going. yes we yeah. do get caught up in our thoughts. And then we think that is the truth, right? We'll repeat to ourselves. I'm not a good mother. I am not a good employee. Like I don't know how to run a business or I'll never do it. 
And if that is like the prevailing thought, of course, you're going to feel overwhelmed. Of course, you're going to feel bad and burnt out and you're going to have anxiety and you're not going to be able to sleep at night. Yeah. 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 Right? And it's just take a breath. <laughs> take a so breath. Just take a breath and just find out like what is going on for you? What are you actually feeling? What is that thought before we go into solution mode of like, let's fix things and let's take action and let's do something. Right, right, right. And you know, it, with, with taking a breath and I love that suggestion too, um, because it's, it really does, it helps in so many different ways. But what we don't realize a lot of times that we're actually holding our breath when we get like super stressed um, and super overwhelmed or we feel the burnout coming, we're actually really not even breathing properly. So, and I say that because I realize that in myself, that sometimes I'd have to stop and like, I'm like, oh my God, I wasn't even breathing there. <laughs> and it sounds yes. weird to say, and even like, uh, like, you know, your tongue is like stuck to the top of your mouth, like all these things, relax your tongue, relax your thoughts, just give yourself like 30 seconds and just yes. breathe. And I, if you can, you can get outside or stand by a window if you're in nine to five. It makes all a world of difference just to get some sunlight on you. Just these simple things really do start to help with your, your mindset and, and your boundaries and the boundaries for yourself, the internal, and then ultimately the external boundaries. Yes. Okay. So I know I can keep going on and on about this and you've offered some really great advice, tips, feedback. What do you have coming up? Like what should we be looking out for from, from Prerica? Yes. So I have two things going on. And so if you found this informative and you'd love to work with me privately as your coach, you can feel free to reach out to me. I'm sure CJ is going to include those details in the yep. notes. And then I've also got a really amazing career program called Career by Design. And so that has been launched. It is an amazing program because there's just so much support, everything you need. And we cover all the tactical pieces, right? So like your LinkedIn, your resume, all of that good stuff. But then we really talk about mindset and that program has unlimited uh, resources. And so what I mean by that is you can ask as many questions as you want. You can join our weekly coaching calls and that's open to you for the lifetime of the program. So I'm super excited about that because I think that's a super accessible and impactful program. Okay. All right. Career by design is called, is, is the name of the program. And yes. All the information, of course, links, everything will be in the show notes. Anybody wants to check it out. Find Perica on LinkedIn. Of course, she's on LinkedIn. Find her on LinkedIn to connect with her there. Um, but before I let you go completely, do you have a nugget to share with your with our listeners today? Yes. So what I want to remind you is, of course, breathing is the first step if you start to feel that burnout come on. But I want mm -hmm. you to almost treat yourself like you would a baby. Right. And so when a baby is crying, you sort of go through the whole process to check. Are they hungry? Do they need food? Do they need to be held? And you never yell at the baby and say, like, what's wrong with you and why are you crying? But unfortunately, a lot of our burnout comes from when we start getting exhausted and we are cranky and we have anxiety, we sort of get mad at ourselves. Like, why is this happening? I need to, you know, be stepping into my power. And instead, if we could take that nurturing approach and treat ourselves like we, we treat other people and really check in to see what do we need, it's probably mm -hmm. a really easy fix of, like you said, taking a walk getting something to eat, getting some sunlight, getting a drink of water. And so I really want you to remember this analogy. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you very much for being here with me today, Prerika, sharing your wisdom. Um, congrats on the program. I'm excited. I'm sure it's gonna you're going to change many lives and improve many uh, boundaries and relationships at nine to fives for uh, many of whoever decides to take advantage of it. And I'm going to let you go now. Have a sparkling day. I will talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.